Hello my fellow math connoisseurs. Today I'm coming at you back with another interesting little proof that at least I found interesting. And I just wanted to go through a little bit of a procedure by which is known as induction to verify that this sequence right here has a limit that exists or doesn't. And let's just get right into it. So basically, looking at this, it's if you're anything like me, it's you know radicals are just kind of terrifying upon first glance because it's just you know it, it just really just adds a new element to whatever problem you're trying to solve, and it's just generally you know preferable to get rid of them if you can. But in this sense, we have to sort of bypass that sort of hurdle in some sense. So all right, so basically looking at this, you know we have obviously the square root of two, and then a composited version of it where you have you know, the square root of 2 beneath that radical, and so on. It just goes on forever. So, to prove whether this sequence has a limit that exists or doesn't, we need to establish a few key facts about this sequence. And generally, we need to prove that it is a monotonic sequence, which is basically stating that this sequence is either increasing or decreasing, and that it has a upper bound or a lower bound of some some specific value. So we need to prove those two details and basically go from there. If we're going to solve for this limit and prove that it exists and then compute that limit. So first of all, if you might notice, uh, this is in fact a recursive sequence, which is basically a sequence that for every subsequent term in that sequence, it relies upon its preceding terms to uh, establish its next values. So that's the idea. Uh, the Fibonacci sequence is actually a pretty famous example of a recursive sequence and that is uh, basically how we're going to treat this one. So let's start out with some generalized terms and then go from there. But first, let's just claim a an upper bound. We're going to claim an upper bound and then try to prove it. So our upper bound here is going to be m equals 2. All right, so we're claiming m for maximum, by the way. That's a little weird, but upper bound. We are claiming that m is equal to 2 here, and we're going to try to prove that. But first, we need to kind of generalize some of these terms here. So first of all, we have our first term in the sequence, which is we're going to call a sub n, and that's the notation we're going to use. So a sub n, we know, is equal to the square root of 2. All right. So let's do our let's do our next one. So our next one is going to be a sub n plus one. All right. So we have a sub n plus one. We're gonna establish what that value is, but keep it general, like I said. So we're gonna have the square root of two times a sub n because a sub n is equal to the square root of two. Right. All right. So that's how we're gonna look at this. So now we need to prove that our upper bound is 2. And to prove that, we need to establish that a sub n is less than 2. Well, we know that a sub n is, in fact, less than 2, right? So this is true, because the square root of 2 is something in the ballpark of 1.414, and just kind of goes on and it's, a, it's an irrational number. So that is basically, you know, that's known. We know that. So the square root of 2 is less than 2. That is a fact. So basically that implies our next term in the sequence, a sub n plus 1, must also be less than 2. And if you're not convinced by that, let me sort of prove that here for you. So what, let's take what we know to be a sub n plus 1, right? So we know a sub n is 2, and so a sub n plus 1 is 2 times a sub n. All right, well, let's prove that this is in fact less than 2. So this must be less than the square root of 2 times 2, right? All right, well, the square root of 2 times 2 is just 2, right? Because 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So, perfect. Now, if maybe you're not convinced still, just look at, like, the terms beneath the radical. Just, like, focus on those. 
preferably. So you have two values of two in this, what we claim to be the greater one, and then you have two and then a sub n beneath this radical. And we've already established that a sub n is less than two. So if that's the case, then this has to be less than this. So that, you know, we'll say that's equal to two. And now we know without a doubt that this is in fact less than two and that our upper bound is two. So perfect, we've checked off that part. And now we need to just prove one more key detail in order to confirm whether that limit exists or doesn't. So we need to prove that the sequence is increasing and increasing towards an upper bound of two. So let's verify it. We're gonna, we're gonna take our, our second term in the sequence again, a sub n plus one. We're gonna write that out right here. So, all right, so we got that. So let's write two times a sub n. Well, let's prove that it is increasing. We know that it's increasing if it's greater than its preceding term, right? So let's prove that. So we'll say, we're gonna claim here, we're not, we haven't completely verified it yet, but you know, we're just gonna try to make sure this is true before we go any further. So this must be greater than this, right? So how can we prove that? Well, look at this. We have our square root of a sub n times, we'll say, a sub n. Well, let's kind of you know, anal analytically work this out. So basically, a sub n times a sub n is a sub n squared, and the square root of that is just a sub n, right? Well, like before, look at the terms beneath the radical, and that will pretty much clarify whether this sequence is increasing or not, and whether this is in fact true. So look at each term. You have a sub n and then two here, right? Well, we've established, like before, a sub n is less than two, and here we have two terms, both equaling a sub n right here. And this is, does in fact equal a sub n. So by virtue of this fact, and the fact that we have one value equaling two here, this must thereby be greater than a sub n times a sub n, thereby concluding that our sequence is increasing. So that basically checks off our list of qualifications that we needed, and thereby confirming that this is in fact a monotonic sequence. So there we go. Now we know without a doubt that this limit does exist, and we can now compute what that limit is. So let's do that. So. Okay, so we're basically just gonna take our, our third term in the sequence and then sort of try to prove that it has the limit we're claiming it does. So basically, we have, well actually, we're not really claiming, we've actually confirmed it at this point, but <laughs> you know, semantic. So basically, we have L, L is equal to, L for limit is equal to, call, call upon this, square root of two times the square root of two times the square root of two, dot, 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 dot. All right, so what can we do with this? So basically what we can work with is just ignore this part right here and realize that if we just get, got rid of that, we just have a pseudo copy of our limit that is you know, excluding the first term here. So by making this pseudo copy, right, we have this part equal to L. So there we go. Let's substitute L in for this, you know, fragmented part of our sequence and then go from there. So we have L is equal to the square root of two times L. All right. So now let's just solve for L, right? So square both sides here. We're going to have L squared is equal to two L. And at this point, we can just divide by L and by the rule of exponents, L must be equal to two. And there you have it. We have our limit equal to two, and we did it all by a process by which is known as induction. And we did it completely absent the use of technology or any other external influences, you know, invoking the use of technology. And you can actually confirm that 
through technology, just punch in larger and larger values of this sequence, and you will see it is converging to the finite value, right, which is known as 2 here. So that you can confirm for yourselves if you don't believe me. But I hope you enjoyed that, and stay tuned. I might release some more interesting videos in the near future, because I have some, uh, some ideas I'm cooking up about what I want to sort of prove or, you know, maybe show you some interesting, compelling consequences that you might find in mathematics and physics for that matter. So thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.